Hey, check this out. This is a Pelican 1510 waterproof protective case and it's the one that's carry-on compatible and it has wheels as well as having the extendable handle. But there's more. I also have here the Nanak 935 which is also waterproof, carry-on compatible, has wheels and has an extendable handle. Wow. So this is the ultimate showdown of two of the most popular protective cases that exist out there that are carry-on compatible. So which one should you spend your hard-earned cash on? Stick around to find out. So my plan is to use one of these two rolling cases here for traveling whenever that starts up again, along with this day pack, which is actually, it's a photo specific pack that I've modified a little bit. Um, it's the Mindshift Backlight 26 liter. So these two things will be with me when I board the plane. I plan to put the heavier stuff, like my computer, my camera kit, into one of these two guys, and to put all my lighter stuff, which includes my clothing, into this personal item sized backpack. And the beauty of this is that we all know it's very possible for you to be denied being able to carry one of these rolling pieces of luggage onto a plane for whatever reason. And my plan is to transfer all the stuff that is fragile out of this case and into this personal item here. And I'm going to make that easier on myself by making sure that I keep my camera kit inside of this. This is the Wandered Essentials camera cube. And note here that this camera cube fits inside of these cases just about perfectly. And it also transfers into my backlight very easily as well. The other thing to consider here is that since I knew I was going to be traveling with a laptop, I got both of these cases with a lid organizer that is actually able to accommodate a laptop. So in the case of the Pelican, you can see it right here. In the case of the Nanak 935, you can see that right here. So let me preview the areas of concern that I'm going to be focusing it on when it comes to assessing whether or not it's this guy or this guy that I'll ultimately go with. I'll put up this slide here. You can see that I'm going to look at company reputation, product guarantee, the weather sealing, the options and accessories associated with each of these, the dimensions, the handles that are the non-extendable handles, the extendable handle and the mechanism associated with that, the wheels, the latches, the hinges, the laptop lid organizer that I just showed you, the overall build quality, and the cost. Now I'll admit there, there's a built-in flaw in my analysis here, which is that I'm essentially taking all those criteria and um, making them all equivalent. And we all know that for you and for me, they're not all equivalent. There are some things that are more important than others. And yet when I do tally things up in the very end, basically I'm treating them as if they are all equivalent. So take this for what it's worth. So what's most important for you to do is to focus on the criteria that you think are most important and use that to make your decision in the end. A couple things to keep in mind in terms of the history. Pelican has been around since 1976 and um, they are the oldest company. They're the biggest company. They probably have the best re uh, name recognition of all these companies that make these kinds of cases. Um, and they're also, well, most of them are manufactured in the United States. The headquarters for Pelican is certainly in the United States, um, but they're also made in Europe and also in Australia. Um, so you can expect that they're going to be a well-made product. Now, Nook, uh, they were established in 1984, and they are an outfit that is headquartered in Canada, and every single one of their cases is actually made in Canada as well. Now there's no doubt that Pelican is the name that's associated with these types of cases. It's not quite on par with 
Kleenex and Band-Aid in terms of its name recognition for something that, you know, we call them protective cases. Um, but it's pretty dang close. And uh, so I would have to say that just in terms of brand recognition, if that's important to you and how old the company is and how big they are, Pelican has the advantage in this regard. So the other piece that's important to a lot of us is what kind of uh, do, do these folks stand behind their product. And you should know that both Nanook, which is made by Plastic Ace, by the way, that's the parent company, and Pelican have a limited lifetime warranty, which essentially means that if there's a manufacturing defect at any point, they're going to fix or replace the, the, uh, the case. Uh, but keep in mind, that doesn't mean that you can run over it with a truck and um, then have them replace it. So there's a limit to it, but it's essentially a lifetime guarantee. So since both of these have a lifetime uh, guarantee, then it's a tie ball game for both of them. Same can be said for the way that these things are weather sealed. Um, what's interesting here is that Nanook actually uses the IP rating, so it's IP7 in terms of water ingress, and what that essentially means is that this can, uh, it won't let any water into the main compartment after 30 minutes in a meter of water. And the same thing can be said for the Pelican, it's just that they don't use the IPX um, index, they just state it that it can survive for 30 minutes underwater, uh, under a meter of water. Similarly, there's an IPX uh, rating six rating for dust ingress for the uh, this Nanook and there's nothing about that on the um, the Pelican site about dust but frankly if you can seal it out from water you can seal this out from dust so both of these essentially have the equivalent ability to keep weather sealed and keep the elements out of all your camera equipment so again another one of these tie ball games for these cases In terms of the different options that one can uh, add on to these cases, there is slight variability here. The, the Pelican here has, well they both you should know, have the pick and pluck foam, which is shown right here. They also have padded divider kits. They look slightly different, but they're essentially the same concept. And as I showed you earlier, they both have the laptop lid organizers. Um, but there are some differences. So Pelican has something that's a little bit different that I actually think is, is tremendously cool. It's called the Trek Pack Divider System. It's sort of hard to make out what's going on here, but it's, uh, it's a more advanced divider system. So if you think of if you're going to be using this thing for your camera equipment, it just makes it a lot easier and it uh, doesn't use as much space. So it's a really great thing. But you should keep in mind that even though it's made by Pelican, because of its dimensions, it actually can fit inside of the Nanook as well. So it's not a huge advantage in that regard. The Pelican also has a very simple lid organizer that doesn't have a space for your laptop. It's just a bunch of pouches on there. Um, Nanook doesn't have that. And then lastly, the, um, the Pelican comes in three different colors that you can find easily. You actually can find some funky colors if you go online, but they're actually sold at a premium and they're not, that, they're not available if you go directly to the Pelican website. So the ones that you can find directly on the Pelican website are black, tan, and olive green. In terms of the Nanook, um, this is a, it's a little bit different. They do have a TSA latch kit that allows you to essentially replace the innards right here with a TSA lock, which is a nice solution. It's a little bit more elegant than sticking a padlock through the the holes that you can see are provided right there. Nanook also provides an option for you to install an instrument panel into these things, which is kind of an odd thing that um, I'm not exactly sure what you would use it for, but I'm sure people who do use them for instrument panels would find it incredibly useful. And then uh, lastly, in terms of the, the color selection, you can see here obviously that there's a yellow one, but if you take a look here, you can see they have black, orange, silver, yellow, olive, as well as graphite. So um, in the end, in terms of which one has more options, I would say that they're actually kind of, it's a tie ball game here. That there's no doubt that the Trek Pack is awesome, but like I said, it can be something that you could use in either of these two cases. Um, and uh, so ultimately, you know, though there are some 
there's an elegant solution in, in the TSA locks. I don't think that's so significant that um, it would tip it over towards Nanix. So again, I would call this a tie when it comes to the options that are available to you when you purchase these bags, uh, these cases. These things are exactly the size to allow you to carry these on US domestic flights. So that's 22 by 14 by nine. Um, and the interesting thing is you can see that the Pelican does give the appearance of being a little bit trimmer. Um, and that's because it doesn't quite have the flanges that you can see associated with the Nanook. Uh, but keep in mind that despite that fact, these things are exactly the same size. So it may make you think that the Pelican actually has a greater internal volume since there's less sort of sticking out from the sides. But that in fact is not the case. They are incredibly similar in size. So when I measured these things, the Nanook and the Pelican are both 20 and a quarter inches in the length. So we're talking about from this side to this side in the interior. In terms of the depth, they're both 7.5 inches. Although you should know, and this is kind of an important thing, the, the lid of the Nanook is actually quite a bit, well, not quite a bit, but it's a half inch deeper than the lid of the Pelican. So um, that seven and a half inch depth is split differently between the two, the Pelican and the Nano. And then lastly, the width is slightly different as well. It's uh, 11 inches across the width of the Nanook, whereas it's 11 and a quarter inches across the width of the Pelican. Now, you may think, oh, well, that gives the advantage to the Pelican, except for the fact if you look here, and I'll show you again with this video, it might be hard for you to see this, but where the sides contact the bottom of the case. You can see that the radius of the curve right here is quite a bit larger in the Pelican as compared to the Nanook. So yes, you may gain a little bit in terms of what it look, or it may seem like there's a little bit more volume because you have the 11.3 or 11 and a quarter inches across the width here to here in the Pelican. Um, frankly, you know, you may lose some of it in, in terms of the radius of that, that uh, curve at the bottom. However, that said, you can see that if you look inside of the Nanook, the wheel wells in the Nanook and the wheel wells in the Pelican are quite a bit different in size. You can see that the Pelican has much smaller wheel wells and even the handle cutout portion is much smaller volume in the Pelican. So, I would say that probably they're, they're essentially going to be the same size. Uh, but if you're somebody who must have the ultimate largest size volume in the interior, then you need to go with the Pelican. But otherwise, for practical purposes, I would say that these things are exactly identical. So let's call this a tie in terms of their dimensions. All right, so let's take a closer look at the handles the handles that are not the extendable handles. You can see here that if you just compare the two, the side handles are quite a bit different. The Pelican one here is much beefier than the Nano. It's pretty obvious. So the side one is, I would certainly say, much better. And in fact, it just feels better. The only difference here is that the Nano, as you can hear, it snaps down in place. And this actually becomes pretty handy because that means it's not going to snag on something as you go by. It stays against there. And that's not the case here for the Pelican, which could swing out and potentially catch on something. If you go to the handle that's on, if you call this the top, maybe you would call it the side, you can see here that Pelican and Nanook handle this in two very different ways. The Pelican basically uses a junior size version of the side handle here, right? It's smaller. It still has a rubber grip on the interior and it flips up. It doesn't lock down. But the Nanook does a very different thing here. It's a spring loaded handle that automatically drops back down when you're not using it. Right? And it has rubber. The rubber goes a little bit more around the top, as you can see here, because that's what's gray there. 
while the Pelican handle is beefier, I'm not sure it needs to be all that beefier given how much you use these things uh, to carry the actual case itself. Most of the time you're going to be using the extendable handle. And the few times that you're going to be using those other handles, I'm not sure how much they really would take abuse such that you need to have them beefier. And the advantage of how elegant the, um, the Nanook handle on the top is, as well as the ability to stay snapped against the side of the case, I think makes it a pretty clear winner. So, check mark for the Nanook. So let's take a look at the extendable handle mechanism because I think that's where you're going to see a pretty significant difference going on here. One thing is for sure, if you take a look at the Pelican, the Pelican actually has a much sort of smaller and flatter. It doesn't take up as, as much volume for the whole mechanism that contains the handle. And you can see here on the Nanook that it looks beefier and um, there's certainly more going on. Now, you also, you know, it's black standing out against the yellow, so it's a little bit easier for you to see this. But you should understand that it's a good inch thick, whereas I would say the whole mechanism, handle mechanism for the Pelican is probably only about three quarters of an inch thick. Another thing to consider here is on the Pelican, there's this little lever that you need to pull in order to pull this up. Now, it becomes a one-hand operation when you're opening it up because you can just open it with your thumb like this and then pull this up and it locks into place. Now, you'll also notice that there's no cutout here. It just becomes sort of a board-like thing. And there are also ears that you can see associated with the Pelican. One of the concerns I have about the ears is that we know that there's a lot of personal items. A lot of personal items have the ability to slide over the handle here. And I am afraid that this handle might be too wide in some cases, and so you wouldn't be able to slide your, um, your personal item onto here and drag it around through the airport. So that may or may not be an issue, um, but it's something to consider that this actually is a pretty good wide top of the handle. The other issue you have here is that if you want to drop the handle down, it does become a two-handed operation. You can't, you have to make sure that you have your hand operating the, the little clip here, and then you can push it down to keep it locked. And then lastly, there's only one level. This thing opens up fully or it's closed fully. There's nothing in the middle. There's no middle length in case you're a shorter person or you don't want to extend the entire length of the handle. So that's the Pelican. So let's take a look at the Nanook here. Um, in the case of the Nanook, you're going to see that this looks much more and acts much more like a conventional uh, handle on rolling luggage. And in this case, you can see there's a button right here, which your thumb goes right to. And you can lift this thing up. And notice, too, that it has a mid-level stop as well as the primary stop here. So that's unlike the Pelican in that way, in that there are two levels that can stop. You'll also note here that there's a nice rubber grip that exists up here, and on the Pelican it was just the hard plastic. And since you're going to be using this quite a bit, this was something that I felt would be really nice to have, a nice rubber grip. The only thing that I will tell you, and let me just bring the Pelican back in here. The nice thing about these ears is that you can actually hold this thing by the corner. And I find myself doing that quite a bit when I'm using rolling luggage, conventional rolling luggage. And having this little ear actually makes it feel, the grip just feels much more secure. Um, so that is one advantage of having those funny little ears there. If, however, you're somebody who simply uses, you know, holds into the dead center, then I think that you're going to find that this is a far more comfortable handle to carry to pull things around on. The other thing I will tell you is that the Pelican, and here I'll try to demonstrate this here side by side. Let me go ahead and raise these up. The Pelican is pretty wiggly. You know, it, it doesn't have um, tubular steel or aluminum or whatever here. So this becomes kind of wiggly. This is much stiffer, okay? It feels much more firm. I don't think this is going to break, but it does feel like it could. Now, you know, I'm sure that if these, this broke a lot, that Pelican would have done something about it. And this is a design they've had for years. So it probably isn't going to break. It just feels really flimsy in comparison to what you have over here with the Nano. So in this case, in terms of um, everything that the Nano has to offer, I think that it's pretty
clear winner in terms of the rolling handle slash the mechanism here um, being better than the Pelican. Okay, so the next item are the wheels. And there's a pretty significant difference going on here with the wheels. On the Pelican, you'll notice here that the wheels themselves are, sort of the profile is much flatter. And I will tell you that they're a much harder, I wouldn't even say they're rubber. It feels much more like a hard plastic that exists there. It's certainly, they're on bearings, and so they roll pretty smoothly, right? In fact, I would say they appear to have less friction than the Nanook. But you'll see that, because the Nanook doesn't spin quite the same way, but it's very important to notice the profile of these wheels in the Nanook are very different, in that they look a lot more like inline skating wheels. And in fact, they're made up of something that is a little bit of a soft rubber. I'm not saying it's soft, but it's a little bit of a softer rubber. And what's important here, for, for one reason or another, I'm not sure why, if you roll this across um, my kitchen floor, you would certainly notice the difference in the sound that is made when these wheels roll on uneven surfaces. And um, that's something to consider because you're going to be rolling through probably some uneven surfaces. And I would think the Pelican, you can hear the, the thud, thud, thud much more readily than you can hear the Nano. So you're not going to be in stealth mode either way, um, but the quieter rolling of the Nano to me is uh, just sort of tells me that it's a little bit more refined in terms of the wheels that are used. So I'm going to give the advantage to Nanook in terms of the wheels. Um, I don't know if one is going to last longer than another, but um, it just in, in terms of immediately right now today, the Nanook has better wheels. So the latches are also significantly different here on these guys because um, they just have very different approaches to what they're doing. What's important for you to see here is that the latch mechanism is exactly what you'd expect. You simply pull the thing up. Now there are two stages to this. There's sort of the first stage and it doesn't undo, right? You have to pull it to the second stage to allow the lid to move up. But what's important here, let me go ahead and lock it all the way down, is when you do this, you can actually open up, you unlatch and open up all in one stroke. Okay? Now that's not going to be the same for the Nanook, so pay attention to what I do with the Nanook when I go to open this up. Here's the only disadvantage you have with the Pelican, and that is you can be fooled into thinking that your Pelican is fully latched when it's not. So for example, I can click it down. You even hear a visible, or an audible click, right, on both sides. But in fact, while it does hold, this is not in a situation where it's fully sealed. To make sure that it fully seals, you have to snap it one more time. And you wouldn't necessarily see a big difference here. Take a look at this. Again, when I go to put this down, it looks for all the world that it's been latched. And it, you just need to make sure to take the next click to put it down. I worry a little bit about that because sometimes when you're in a rush, you don't necessarily look at your case to be sure that it's fully sealed. And God forbid um, this thing isn't fully sealed or I don't know, you go around a corner too fast and it springs open, that would be a huge bummer. You're not going to be able to do that, you'll see in just a moment, with the Nano case. However, the Nano case, it's a little fussy because um, though you'll catch on to it for sure as time goes on, it's definitely a multi-stage process. You'll see there's this little silver area in here, or gray area, and you need to pull down on that with your thumb as you lift up on this latch and then drop the latch like so. It's very easy to do and in fact one of the great things with the Nano is how easy it is to use these latches and um, there much less pressure is needed, much less strength is needed to open and to close this. But what's very important for you to understand here, so as I show you how I do this, okay, I can open this up, right? but then I actually have to lift the lid separately. Don't forget, moments ago when I was showing you with the Pelican, I could do it all in one fell swoop. So if that's an important thing to you, to be able to just unlatch and open up all in one motion, then the Pelican is going to be the way to go. In this case, however, I will tell you that you're never going to have the problem that I just pointed out earlier. This thing is obviously unlatched right now. 
And even if it were to semi-latch like this, obviously it's not latched down. And you have one single solid click, it takes very little effort, and you know it's latched. And you also know that it can't be just pulled open because it has this secondary locking mechanism that you have to push your thumb down on in order to undo it. So I feel like this is a much more positive mechanism. And frankly, I'm so used, if you, if you work at it enough, you don't even think about it. You get so used to the process that it doesn't become something where you actually have to think about how to open up the Nanook case. So in this case, I think I would have to say that the Nanook has the advantage over the Pelican in terms of these latches. I had my ruler out for this next thing because we're going to be talking about the hinges on these two cases. And I'm going to start with the Nanook here. And if you look at the Nanook in terms of where the hinges are, they're right on the, the outside edges of the back of the case. And the hinges themselves are roughly, let's say, seven inches in width. So you have two seven inches, two seven inch hinges across. And they take up clearly two thirds of the back of the case. Now, again, I want you to think about this. If you are going to have failure at the hinges, um, it would be unlikely, number one, but the more hinge you have, the better you can count on this whole thing sealing. Take this to the extreme. Imagine you only had one tiny little one inch hinge here. Then you'd have a lot of flexibility associated with this case top such that you wouldn't be able to guarantee that it was fully sealed. Um, not, only, not to mention the fact that it's just not gonna be as robust a hinge if you only have a single one inch hinge there. So the, I would think that the longer the hinge is, the better, okay? So Nanook again has you know, roughly seven inch hinges associated with it. So let's take a look at our Pelican. You can see here that these don't go all the way out to the side. And obviously you can also see that these are much smaller hinges. The Pelican hinges are only four inches long. And if you combine the two, they only take up about one third of the entire back of the case as opposed to two thirds of the back of the whole case. If there's some, if one of these is gonna fail at the hinge, it's probably going to be the Pelican first over the Nano. In terms of the, um, the metal, the gauge of the metal that they use in there, it appears to be about the same. Um, it's hard to tell because I wouldn't want to, uh, I can't really pull it out of the Pelican. But that does bring me to another interesting thing associated with the Nano. And that is that these are actually removable hinges in here. Now, I'm not sure why you would ever need to do that. I mean, some people talk about if you're a DJ and so you have all your, you know, just everything set up in here, you don't want to be blocked. You, know, you want the audience to be able to see you. Um, and so they have this mechanism where you simply pull up and pull out the, uh, the pieces of metal that hold the hinges together and you can lift the lid right out. And again, I'm not so sure that's something that I'm going to really care about. I care much more about how robust these hinges are. And I would say that just looking at um, the overall length of the, the hinges associated with the Nanook, I would give them the advantage over the Pelican. So let's take a closer look at the laptop organizer. Um, and first we'll look at the, the Nanook here. Now, to access the laptop organizer, you'll see that there are three points that you have to undo in order to slide the laptop into here. The other thing that's kind of funny about the Nanook here is that it's super wide. I don't know many laptops that are that wide. In fact, I know no laptops. That I don't think they would ever exist to be that wide. And one of the problems you have here is if you take, say, your 13-inch MacBook Pro, which is what I have, and I put it into there without any other casing around it, it's going to slide back and forth pretty tremendously. I mean, it's going to probably slide a good six inches um, as you move the case around. That doesn't leave me feeling really too comfortable about how well this is going to protect it, even if it is fully padded and circling the entire thing. I just don't like the idea that my laptop could slide. And so inevitably, I'm probably going to have to put my laptop into a sleeve and then put it into here if I decide to go with a Nano. Um, so you'll see that this is a very different design in the Pelican. In the Pelican, it looks much more like your traditional laptop case. It's got the single flap. It's going to fit easily a 15, if not 16 or 17 inch laptop. And it also has this safety belt that wraps around it. 
to keep it nicely contained. But even more so than that, it's removable. So think about what I need to do. Remember, if I need to move my stuff out of my case and move it into my personal item, I can easily, especially if I'm using a personal item that doesn't have a specifically padded laptop case, boom, or sleep, I can just take this thing out and stick it into my day pack and I'm good to go. So this is really a really nice implementation of the laptop lid organizer. And I would say for sure the Pelican has this over the Nano. The other piece here is that this is a padded case and you could easily put your charger into here and have it not damage anything that you might have, like your camera equipment in the main compartment of it. So having it be padded is really handy. The only advantage I would say, and I didn't show this to you, so let me open this up. The advantage I say that the Nanook has is that these three cases that you have here, they are see-through. And I think that's super handy because you can see what it is that you're getting. You can say, oh, that's where I have my lens cap or that's where I have my MacBook charger and that one. You don't have to go digging for it and looking for it in the dark. So um, that is super handy. Somehow we need to fuse these two things so that um, we combine what Nanoc has and what Pelican has to make the best laptop lid organizer because um, both of them have good things. But I would still say that for sure, the Pelican laptop organizer is much better than the Nanox. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the build quality of these two beasts here. Both of them are, they are awesome in terms of their build quality. Um, in fact, I would say the Nanox almost looks a little bit overbuilt with all the ribs and everything associated with it. Um, and you know, the, the Pelican has a little bit of a, a simpler look. I mean, not to mention the fact this one's bright yellow, but let's, let's try to subtract that away. However, um, what I think really hurts the Pelican is that extendable handle mechanism. It just feels cheap and flexible and kind of like an afterthought, uh, whereas the Nano really seems really well designed and well thought out. And it's not going anywhere. The, the Nano feels really stout and beefy and thoughtful in its design. So I think it's gonna, there's no doubt that it would last longer. My guess is that both of them last as long as you wanna use this case. I don't think these cases are gonna break down, but if I'm judging build quality, that's gonna be something that really influences me in terms of moving towards the Nano case. The other thing that I find um, that's kind of interesting here is if you take the Pelican case and open it up. Don't forget that the Pelican case has a thinner lid than the Nanoc. And so you'd expect that because it's thinner and it doesn't have all this funny ribbing all over it, that it would be more flexible. And yet it's quite a bit stiffer, noticeably so. If you took this out and started to flex it, it doesn't have nearly the amount of flexion that you have associated with the Nanoc. Despite the fact that the Nanoc is a thicker one, it's much more flexible. So it's hard to say. You know, it might be that the Nanoc is not made, the, the materials are not as stiff. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the materials are more fragile. It just means that they're not as stiff as those that we see, or the design is not as stiff as that we see in the Pelican. Um, so it's, it's a little hard to say, but again, overall in terms of the, the way the latches work, the way that the, the handles just sort of click into place, it feels like they took a little bit more time to think out the Nanook and um, also to sort of build the Nanook into something that they knew would be more bomb proof. So it's close again. Um, I would almost give this a tie, but I think if you were me and you were comparing these two things, you would probably come to the same conclusion that the Nanook actually has a better build quality than the Pelican 1510. Okay, and let's take a look at the, the last criterion, which is the cost of these guys. Now, um, keep in mind that you can get these things in all sorts of different combinations uh, in terms of what's inside. If it's empty or it has the pick and pluck foam, or if it has the, the camera divider system, etc. 
Um, and so the, the price is going to vary tremendously. So I want to try to make sure that we compare apples to apples when I compare the, the cost of each of these cases. So if you were to look at these as completely empty cases, no lid organizer, no pick and pluck foam, the Nanook comes in at $125, whereas the Pelican is $150. So $25 difference there. And by the way, the prices I'm looking at are the kinds of prices that you find for street prices, not the MSRP that you find on the websites. Uh, it's really where you, most of you are gonna buy this thing on Amazon, and so if you buy it on Amazon, these are the prices that I'm, I'm quoting to you. Um, the next stage up would be having it with the pick and pluck foam, and that would be having foam on the top lid as well as foam in the main compartment. And in that case, the, uh, the Pelican comes in at $200, whereas the Nanook would come in at $169, so essentially a $30 difference there. And then um, many of you, if you're uh, people who are, are photogs, you are going to want to buy the ones that have the padded divider system that you can move around. It has Velcro so you can move around the dividers to fit your equipment. And if that's the case, the Pelican is $238 and the Nanook is $170. So it's essentially the same, you know, whether you get the foam or you get the divider system, it's $169, $170, so that's virtually the same. It would make no sense for you to get the pick and pluck foam, by the way, just giving you a little hint there. Make sure that you get the divider system. And then lastly, if you got these configured in the way that I got them, which is with the laptop lid organizer and the pick and pluck foam, then the Nanook comes in at about $200, or not about, that's $200, as, and the, um, the Pelican comes in at $250. So in every single one of these situations, the Pelican is at least $25, if not $50 more than the Nanook. So, you know, all things being equal, Obviously, the advantage of cost goes to the Nanook. So if we tally up everything here, we can see here that there are a lot of ties we have associated with this. Um, the uh, Pelican takes it in terms of the company reputation and the laptop lid organizer, but uh, the Nanook essentially takes it in all other categories or ties for the Pelican in all other categories such that if you were to count every point as one point and they're all going to be equal in terms of their what you think is important um, the Nanook comes in at seven winning seven out of 13 categories whereas the pelican comes in only winning two out of the 13 categories so i think it's pretty obvious folks if i'm going to be spending my hard-earned cash on one of these two cases i'm going with a Nanook. 935. I do think that overall it's a better value and it's a better case. So I hope this was helpful. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe right here and take a look at some of my other videos. And uh, I, otherwise, I hope you stay safe and healthy. And I do hope this was helpful. Bye.